Mr. Chairman, everybody is in from the waiting room. All right, thank you. Good evening. I'd like to call the June 7th Board of Selectmen meeting to order at 6.02. And we're well, first I want to make one comment before we open it up to public comment. I want to congratulate Selectman Donnelly on, on her victory. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't here last meeting, so I didn't want to say that. It must have been a it was a hard fought victory. It was hopefully, a hard fought campaign. <laughs> hopefully next time when they get those uh term limits in, it might be a little easier for you. So <laughs> so with that said, we'll open it up to public comment. <laughs> All right, Monty, let me know <clears throat> who we have it? for public comment. Toby's hand was up, but now it's down. We'll go with Eric first. Thank you. Yeah, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Hutchins. I'm from 45 Pools Lane. Uh, I just have maybe two minutes worth of comments to make uh, and a question or an update. Um, as you know, I'm going to butter um, uh, to the uh, Rockport train station area, and I had the uh, unique opportunity to um, <coughs> follow closely the activities by the MBTA recently to do construction work that the town and local boards and committees were given extremely short notice of only 24 hour business lead time for work taking place in less than 100 feet from the town's municipal well field. Um, I had sadly the opportunity to see um, the construction take place and see an oil sheen that emanated from the excavation that um, they dug at the site. And I've certainly raised this with a number of boards and committees. The town is on record, both the, the DPW, the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health all tried to prevent this activity from taking place. I do recognize that the town of Rockport boards and committees don't actually have legal standing because of some exemptions at state law. But regardless, something's really wrong if the town of Rockport doesn't have the ability or right to formally protect its drinking water supply from a public health perspective. I do believe this is something that needs to be raised to higher authorities and needs to be addressed in a public setting. And um, I would just like to know if there's any update from the Board of Selectmen and or if anything formal is taking place from a municipal perspective. Thank you, I appreciate your help. Thank you. I don't have any answers to that, so or updates, but I will look into it and I'll get in touch with you if I find out anything. Is, is Mitch still on here? No. Yes. Um, okay, do, uh, does the office, I know we've been in conjunction working with uh, Ferrante's office and Tara's office. Mr. Chair, do you, do you want me to address that or? If there's an, if it's a or, so the, update, go ahead. The, there's nothing further to report. The Board of Health uh, is the primary in this particular case. Um, they discussed it at their meeting last night. Uh, you know, they certainly discussed that they would uh, engage with the senator and the representative about some potential requests for changes to state law. But there's nothing further at this at this time. Um, we've okay. exhausted our ability with it, uh, according to town council. But we remain, um, uh, you know, vigilant in monitoring it. Thank you, Stuckman. Will you? I think it's worthy to note that the well field that is in question here is not being used. So that rather than there be left any doubt in the minds of the citizens of Rockport that their drinking water has been infringed upon, damaged in any way, the answer is no. So um, I would um, just provide that caution. Thank you. Select Bowen Wilkinson. Yeah, just to, um, to add on to that, thanks Herm for making that note. I think that's um, really good for the residents to know. And I think it's something that we should also add to um, our list of items to discuss when Senator Tarr and Rep Ferrante come in and meet with us. I know that happens a couple of times a year. Sounds good. All right, Toby. On? Yep, you're on. Toby Arseni in 95 Granite Street. Uh, shortly, you'll be uh, appointing new members for the Conservation Commission. I'm surprised not to see anything on the agenda, but uh, when you do, um, usually it's a standard that the board adheres to, although not a formal rule, that applicants are expected to attend at two, two meetings of the commission uh, before they apply. 
uh, obviously with no uh, working commission that you know, goes by the wayside. It's not a possibility, couldn't be a requirement. Uh, would it be possible when you interview candidates, when you get candidates, uh, to invite the remaining members of the Conservation Commission uh, to that meeting and invite them to ask questions? That would be the nearest approximation that you could get to um, having the candidates uh, attend a Conservation Commission meeting. Also, it occurs to me that when you do get the candidates, you'll be very eager to have them aboard and sworn and that the usual procedure of nominating at one meeting and appointing at the next will uh, very likely and reasonably enough be uh, put aside. So I would hope that when you get to uh, interviewing the candidates, uh, the public would be allowed to comment uh, upon them since there'll be no other opportunity. Uh, one other thing, um, I had uh, some concerns about the operations of the Community Preservation Committee and um, wrote drafts of uh, proposed uh, regulations that would go into the bylaws. Um, they have not, for the past few years, been holding the required public hearing. Uh, now they intend to, but uh, apparently not at the time when it would be useful. Uh, shortly, they will be through reviewing all of the projects. I gather that's June, and they then vote on them. Uh, the public hearing, if it's actually to be uh, of any use to the public, uh, needs to take place after they have reviewed all of the projects, but before they vote to fund any of them. Once they've voted to fund any of them, the die is cast, and those who uh, have questions or objections uh, can indulge in recriminations, but can't expect to um, affect the outcome short of the town meeting, which would be unfortunate. So I want to know when they've scheduled the meeting uh, and will that take place before they vote on the projects? All right, Toby, thank you for that. I'll, uh, I'll just speak he to the chair ask, too, just to... He should ask, he should talk to the, sorry, Russ. He should talk to community preservation. He should talk to the chair of CPC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was getting to that. And so may I'll I also reach out to him too as well. Go ahead, Stephen Murphy. Oh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I believe uh, Toby is wrong in, in that uh, you have to go to two meetings. I believe we got rid of that as well as voting, uh, you know, uh, interviewing the candidate in the next meeting voting. I believe we did. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, that kind of uh, stuck out in my mind. Thanks. The uh, the attendance at two meetings is, is still in your policy. The um, waiting one meeting nomination and appointment uh, was eliminated. Okay. Uh, during the interview process, Mitch has added a step on to make sure everyone's well aware on what they're getting into. So to ease the minds of if they have been able to reach those. So we'll move on. No more public comment? Seeing none. So we'll move on to the appointment interview of Dan Duffy for the Economic Development Committee. Oh, yeah, Development Committee. I see him down there. How are you doing, Dan? Good, thank you. Uh, I don't know, I guess uh, I should say I'm Dan Duffy and I live at 55 Broadway. Yeah, you can also tell us a little about, about yourself. Yeah, well, uh, my wife and I have... Uh, uh, own the Beach Street Bed and Breakfast since uh, May of 2011. And we look at ourselves as goodwill ambassadors for the town, whether our guests are American or they're international. Um, and I'd say um, we're quite, uh, I've been quite active with the Rockport Innkeeper Association. I serve as their facilitator. And um, back in 2020, I represented lodging on the reopening Rockport committee. And um, I'm also an active uh, member of the Greater Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce. So I guess those would be some of my uh, community activities. I'll open up to the uh, board for any questions. Second Murphy. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chairman. Dan, uh, what uh, made you, I mean, I, I think I know, but what made you uh, interested in this committee? Yeah, well, I, you know, I've attended several um, Cape Ann Chamber um, Rockport Division meetings, and, um, you know, there are a number of questions that come up, and, and I seem to have an opinion about things, and after the last one, I just thought, well, maybe I should do something rather than just having an opinion, 
Uh, and in, in terms Novel of my, back, my background, um, I spent a lot of time in, at a community college in New Jersey. And one of the roles I had was a director of business and industry. And so what, what it was all about was um, not expecting business people to come to the college, but having me go out to them. So I think, um, you know, my, my approach would be one of, you know, trying to foster communication, two-way communication uh, with uh, the business community, with the whole idea of, uh, you know, enhancing, um, you know, our local economy. Excellent. Whereabouts in New Jersey were you? Um, I was in Ocean County College at the Jersey Shore. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll just select one Wilkinson. Sure. Um, I worked with Dan on the reopening committee. He was um, an awesome contributor, partner. Um, he Dan is great at balancing the needs of residents and visitors. And I think this is like the absolute perfect spot for him. So I'm really excited to, for him to fill this role. Thank you. And I, I believe you're coming off. Are you still the president of the uh, Rob Port, the Inns Association? Or are you? Well, we don't really have a president. We call it facilitator. All right. Yeah. And so it's, it's you know, uh, trying to get uh, three or four of us on our steering team together to map out, uh, you know, a plan for an agenda and then, you know, getting it out to people and, and um, you know, hosting the meeting. It would definitely be good to have a, a in on the uh, Economic Development Committee for a different view on the downtown yes. area. So good. If there's no more questions, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, oh uh, I was going to ask a question. Yes, um, at least one. Uh, Dan, uh, do you have any particular uh, goal in mind with regard to the Economic Development Committee that would in fact, enhance the economic activity in Rockport? Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to what I was saying about communication. I know there are several other people on the committee. And I think the other thing that I think about is I'm really strong in the whole idea of um, partnerships and collaboration. So certainly the idea that uh, Maria Stefano, as a regional uh, director of the Northeast, um, what is it, um, uh, Board of... Um, uh, business development, she's on that committee and and we certainly need to get together as a committee to talk about, you know, what are our strengths and what do we see as perhaps the mission of the committee and then how does it serve the interests of the board of selectmen. So I don't know that I have any one thing in, in mind. Um, you know, it is about, I think, um, you know, trying to attract business to town. Once they're here, how do you um, help retain them, uh, maybe help them solve some problems, and and ideally help them to expand. You know, so that that would be where I'd be at at this point without having spoken with any other committee members. Okay, thank you. Any more? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Sure, Mr. Chair, I move that the board appoint Dan Duffy as a member of the Economic Development Committee for a term to expire on June 30th, 2023. I'll second, second that. And roll call vote. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Loya? Aye. And Selectwoman Donnelly? Aye. And Selectman Brackett votes aye. So you're signed up, Dan. <laughs> All right, well, thank ready you. To go. We'll thank be in touch you. to get a meeting set up for you guys. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, we have a uh, committee update from the Millbrook Meadow Committee. And I think Shannon's here. Yep, there's Shannon. I'm here, hi. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you, Chairman Brackett um, and other selectmen. Um, thank you for having us. Um, I just wanted to note our other committee members who are present this evening, uh, Laura Hallowell, our vice chair is here, Sam Colburn, who is our secretary and member Dwight Valentine. Um, I wanted to start, uh, you know, off this evening with, uh, we all have good news, but um, some particularly good news that I don't know if you all saw our Facebook post about, but um, recently in February, the Connecticut chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects 
um, awarded Millbrook Meadow um, and the consulting firm, formerly Mamelone and McBroom, but now um, SLR Consulting, the Award of Excellence um, for uh, 2021. So that's a, a notable award for our um, project. And I just wanted to read real quickly um, one juror's comments um, that this was obviously a very significant project for the community of Rockport. Great analysis, prioritization, and implementation, addressing key issues, good stewardship, and land, and, sus and sustainable for envir the environment. I think it's an extraordinary project with significant benefit to both the community and the environment, outstanding design that hits all the categories, restoration, sustainable, and respect to context. So um, I just want to let you guys know that. I also have um, an award certificate that I'll be dropping off to whomever would like to have it, and maybe Mitch at Town Hall, and if you guys would like to um, frame and mount, um, I'd love to help with that as well. So anyway. Um, so moving on, I just also wanted to thank our uh, donors and volunteers, of whom we have many. Uh, the, um, in addition to the town appropriated uh, funds, which we are grateful to have in the budget, um, the Conservancy uh, has two fun main fundraising events, a letter of appeal in the summer and then a holiday wreath sale um, in November. Those two fundraising events uh, raised a total in 2021 of $17,640. Um, of that, uh, the maintenance expenses, uh, which we budget for annually, um, the last year's budget was $14,432. Um, we came in under budget of funds spent, and that total was $10,056. So um, those two fundraisers do uh, very well to help um, offset those maintenance expenses. Uh, further down in the, uh, after I finish some of my other updates, Laura Hallowell is going to give you a little more um, detailed presentation on the um, plantings that have recently gone on. Um, so I'll turn that over to her in a minute. But um, I also wanted to note the, um, we have had several uh, notable events um, in the meadow and um, particularly happy that the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce was able to return um, this year for the annual Easter egg hunt, um, which was uh, well attended and um, fun had by all, I would say. Um, the, also recently we had the fourth annual uh, Rockport Poetry Festival um, in the, unfortunately had a little rainy day for their festival, but it was attended and enjoyed. Um, upcoming events uh, this summer that are on the calendar, um, we do have some that um, are going to be considered for the library um, to have uh, in the meadow, but the Rockport Acoustic Festival is scheduled for um, August the 14th. It runs from 12 to noon. And um, another exciting addition is uh, Windover has approached us and um, is going to have a, what they call small stages, more of a pop-up um, performance event um, with two time slots in, on August the 18th. So we're looking forward to that. We're always welcome um, for birthday parties and uh, small wedding ceremonies. We have uh, recently had one in the meadow for one young rock porter that included ponies for his birthday party, which was um, a lot of fun. So it's always great to see um, those events and um, people enjoying the space. So um, contact the committee if you are interested. Um, one other new notable thing that I wanted to uh, let you guys know about is Eric Hutchins, who um, you heard from earlier, is our um, uh, you know environmental advisor on the committee, and he uh, and a team of volunteers have an eel trap that I'm sure you've probably noticed uh, in the pond just above the um, the spill spill area and uh, eel ladder. Um, this is a second year that we have uh, initiated a, an eel run raffle. We call it the Eelorama. Mm -hmm. um, and it starts in April and runs through October when the eels are running. So by the end of um, April, we have people buy a raffle ticket, 
you guess how many eels you think are going to be in the run for that year, and then it's a 50 50 um, uh, prize at the end. And you know, if multiple people are, then we share the, the prize if everybody, if there are multiple guesses for the right answer. So a bit of fun. Um, also of note is uh, Eric spent about two hours yesterday um, with Bob Oaks from WBUR um, in the meadow and talking about eels and conservancy and, um, and the meadow itself. Um, and uh, it's likely going to be one of Mr. Oakes's final um, radio uh, pieces uh, as he's retiring at the end of June, but we look forward to that and I'll certainly um, will get the word out when that will air. So that's, that's exciting news. I just want um, to say I will miss his voice. I bet. Yes. In I his agree. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I agree. I agree. Um, so the last thing before I turn it over to Laura is just um, a notation that we do have two um, openings on our committee. Uh, we are looking for volunteers um, in the committee capacity, membership capacity, but also in the meadow to do work. We have a variety of things that um, uh, Laura orchestrates uh, in terms of uh, from weed teams to watering teams to planting teams. Um, and uh, so both of our uh, contacts are active on the town webpage. And if anyone is interested, we're certainly um, open to hearing from you. So um, please do so. Um, so Laura, I'm going to turn this over to her now and let her continue with a little more detail. So um... Good evening, and I have to say my internet connection is coming and going, so we'll try to make it short and hope that when it freezes for five or 10 seconds, I can come back in. Um, I'm basically in charge of maintenance and planting, and I wanted to update you on the planting. Um, our, the plan that you approved last winter basically involved getting ground cover under all of the foundation plantings that had been done originally. And last year we did about two thirds of it. We planted uh, 2,500 plugs for ground cover, three trees, 18 shrubs, and had 445 hours of volunteer time. And I'm thrilled to say that almost everything. Oh, lost it. Yeah. I think we did. I'll give her another few seconds. Yep, oh, there, she, there she, she came uh, alive again. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the last thing we heard, Laura, was about now the, the number of plugs uh, most recently. <laughs> so maybe just move uh, on to this year's. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead, I think. No, yeah, you're back Shannon and forth. will have to fill in. We'll, I'll, we'll try turning off her video to see if that helps. Sometimes that addresses some of the connections. Uh, yeah, connection. Monty, you want to give that a try? I just did. Oh. Laura, Shannon, try now. You're going to have to fill in because it's not working. Laura, I think they just um, stopped you your video. Hear. And so the audio might be OK. If you want to just go ahead with the verbal commentary, that'd be fine. He might be behind on the audio, so she's she might not be caught up yet. OK. We'll give another minute and see what happens. Well, we'll we'll Nadra, we'll you on the landing Shannon, just go ahead because okay. it's not working. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I can I can start, but it'll probably cut out. I guess a lot of it is just that. Excuse me. <coughs> We're seeing not only all the swaths of color. Uh, I, she's going in and out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up Laura. Um, where so um, let's see the the cons uh, another big part of uh, Laura's work that she didn't mention was the monitoring that's still required by the Mass Department of Environmental Protection. Um, they're getting ready to start doing this third year of um, of reporting. So Laura um, and, uh, and, and, and a, another volunteer will start doing the monitoring and then the reporting write up itself, uh, which then needs to be um, the water quality report submitted to the DEP. Um, 
So uh, beyond that, they have finished a second round that remaining one third of the plantings um, that was uh, 1,180 plugs of plants. Um, and then we're gonna do amendments of a, a small batch in August. But um, anyway, uh, but the, the big note is this will be the final year of our reporting um, and um, compliance certificate should be forthcoming after that report is submitted. Um, so beyond that, do you all, if anybody has any questions, I'm certainly available to answer those. Any questions from the board? Comments? Just congratulations on your award. That's wonderful news and a great reflection of all the hard work you've all put into this. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. A lot of that goes to the design team. It did a, a great job, um, but it was certainly a very uh, good partnership and, and a good effort. I agree. Thank you. I, I just I just want to say that <clears throat> I, like uh, many of the Board of Selectmen, uh, grew up in Rockport and, uh, and, and Millbrook Park has always been in a very special place. And uh, uh, the restoration that occurred was just um, amazing. And I walk my dogs through the uh, with with bags. I pick up if they, they go back. We have a box. There's yeah, some. No, oh no, no, it's everything neat. is great. Though. No, it's, it's beautiful. I played uh, so many hockey games on Milbert Park when the, the ice used to freeze. Uh, so, uh, but uh, thank you for all your hard work. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a jewel of Rockport, like so many. So, but just want to uh, uh, say thank you for all the, all your hard work in the committee and. Please pass that on. I will. Thank you, Selectman Murphy. Much appreciated. And yes, Selectman Wilkinson. Yeah, just congratulations, Shannon. It's also great. What a great team you have surrounding you to work on the meadow. I feel like I never drive by without seeing people in the park working, <laughs> yeah. which, is really, which is really cool and really special. So congratulations. Ross, when we're done with, with their, um, before they leave, can I just make a comment at the end? I just mm -hmm. want to capture this group for one second. Thanks. Any more comments? Just like one million? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> congratulations. Um, certainly everyone else has mentioned it. I will mention it also. Um, my hope is that the park will be used by all members of the community. Um, there is uh, certainly a reflection that the park is used by those um, who have special interests in town. Um, but then again, um, Paul did refer to the common and ordinary use of the park from my history and his history. And my hope is that the park will always entertain whomever comes forward in all seriousness with regard to their use of the park. So thank you. And I'll say you, you guys done a great job. Yeah, I mean, I know for a, a couple of years there, I'm sure before all, any work was done, it was, it was almost like a lost cause for it felt like me you know but now like as i walk through it with my kids it, i feel the same as when i was a kid too and i got to walk through it so it, it really is great so yeah i agree thank you ross much at selectman bracket i appreciate it <laughs> select one wilkinson yeah i just just switching gears for one second just because we sure. rarely get this group here but I just wanted to mention um, to those who didn't know that Sam Colburn, who's here as a member of, of the Millbrook Meadow Committee, um, was the speaker at our memorial mm. ceremonies last week. Hi, Sam. <laughs> and um, I just, I, I actually, I sent you an email that evening, but it got bounced back. So maybe your email has changed, but I just wanted to thank you again for your comments. It was, they were so touching and it was so interesting to me. My 10 year old was in the parade playing the saxophone with the elementary school band. And after the parade, we were walk, driving home and he said, um, he said, Captain Colburn's um, speech, of course, as he calls it, was just amazing. So I thought it was really cool how your speech was not only geared towards all ages, but you really captured all ages. So I just wanted to thank you and let you know how much your words meant to all of us that attended. And it was so nice to have that ceremony and parade back after um, two years of not having it. 
So thanks. Sorry to interrupt Millbrook Meadow. I just wanted to <laughs> have you stand here. I'll, always welcome to have interruptions for our appreciation of Mr. Cole. Thank you. If, if, I missed it, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I have to uh, uh, concur with uh, Sarah Wilkinson. Uh, I've known Sam all these years and uh, uh, the way he spoke, uh, it was, was wonderful. And he not only spoke to the older generation, which I'm fast approaching, uh, but he, he spoke to the kids and, and uh, th that was evident in what uh, Sarah Wilkin just, Wilkinson just said. So uh, thank you, Sam. You're, you're a treasure here in Rockport. You are. True. Much, much agreed. Very good. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks. You're welcome. Nice to thank see you all that. very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, moving on. We have the consent agenda. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? Yes. I believe I have that. You do. Okay. Hey. Okay, I move that the board approve all non held items on the consent agenda. I'll second that. Second. All right, roll call. Oh, any discussion? Roll call vote. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. And Selectwoman Donald? Aye. And Selectman Brackett votes aye. Motion carries. On to the action list. First up, we have approval of bond anticipation note for water and roadways. I think Mitch is going to elaborate a little bit for us. Certainly, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So this is the um, start of the uh, initial short-term borrowing for the projects that were approved, I believe, a, a year and a half ago uh, for roadway work and for water um, uh, water line replacement. So um, this gets the cash flow moving for those projects. Um, you know, I would say, un unfortunately, um, as has been the case with many projects, not just here, but really everywhere, um, the money is not going to be able to stretch as far as we'd like it to uh, because of the cost increases for materials and uh, shortages. So uh, the DPW is working diligently to stretch it as far as they can, but um, unfortunately we won't be able to get everything that we had hoped for uh, in the initial request. Uh, but this, at least this now starts the process so they can get moving with some of their borrowing. All right. Any questions for me before we move on to a motion? All right, I'll take a motion. All righty. So it's a long one, but it's not the longest one of the night. <laughs> Welcome back, Denise. Thank you, yes. Um, uh, sit, sit back and relax, everyone. I move that the board approve the sale of $500,000, 2.15% general obligation bond anticipation note, the note of the town dated June 16th, 2022 and payable June 15th, 2023 to Newburyport Five Cent Savings Bank at par and accrued interest, if any. And further that in connection with the marketing and sale of the note, the preparation and dist distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated May 25th, 2022, and a final official statement dated June 2nd, 2022, each and such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, and approved. And further, that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post issuance federal tax compliance procedures in such form as the town treasurer and bound council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place, to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the st tax exempt status of the note. And further, that any certificates or documents related to the note, collectively the documents, may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded as an original, and all of which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page to such document. And electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purposes of the documents and all matters relating thereto, having the same legal effect as original signatures. And further, that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are 
authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I'll second that. All right, any discussion? Roll call vote, select woman Wilkinson. Aye. Select woman Murphy. Aye. Select woman Loya. Aye. Select woman Donnelly. Aye. And select woman Brackett votes aye, motion carries. Next on the action list, we have approval of music at the beach. Select woman right. Wilkinson, will you be talking about this or? Yeah, I will um, be be discussing it and then, I, but I, I'll recuse myself from voting for it. Okay. Great. Um, thank you very much. I don't think Bruce Reed is with us tonight, right? Uh, nope, I didn't see him. Okay, I didn't see him. So um, this is a project that Bruce does the heavy lifting on. I and my son Wyatt help him out. Um, and I'm just, I emailed the board the schedule. This year, um, bands are really excited to come back. And as everyone knows, this is Monday music at Back Beach. Uh, the music takes place in the bandstand. And um, bands are literally like lining up. I think Bruce has a wait list of bands that want to play this year, which is really cool to be back. Um, and let me see, I'm just trying to find the, here we go. The lineup is um, opening up on Monday, July 11th with Mari Martin, local rock porter and the Lucky Boys. July Class of 785, by the way. <laughs> Paul has an amazing memory of graduation years. Uh, July 18th with Reggae by another Rockport local band, Pierre Ave. Paul, any commentary on that one? No. Nope. I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, July 25th, Northwest Fox. Um, August 1st, which happens to be Jerry Garcia's birthday, we have found a Grateful Dead cover band, which I'm extra excited for. <laughs> August 8th, we have the Hot Tub Piranhas. Um, August 15th, we have another Rockport band, the Headlands, which everyone uh, knows and loves. August 21st, we have um, our finance committee owns Carl Engel and his band Knowledge. Um, and August 28th, Bruce is still sorting out, but um, really excited. I think the um, same time, I think it's six to 8.30. And, um, you know, typically we work with the Legion and they sell hot dogs and popcorn and people typically bring, bring picnics and um, coolers with beverages. And it's a really, you know, family fun, family safe, fun time for everybody. So looking forward to it again. Happy to answer any questions. Sergeant Murphy? Yeah, I, I do have some concerns. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, what a wonderful uh, event. Uh, how many years, Sarah? I think this is the fourth. Fourth of all. Um, wow. And, you know, in my spare time, I do want to get movies at the beach going at some point too, because okay. I like still want to, I want to make that happen. But for now, we're just going to worry about music at the beach. But so, um, so, so four years, the fourth. it might be the fourth. There's a chance it could be the, I think it's the fourth, maybe the fifth. Right. Well, well certainly uh, kudos to all of you folks, especially Bruce Reed and uh, Wyatt Wilkinson, that which uh, I, I suspect I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now, this launches his political career. <laughs> he, he, uh, he loves politics and he loves uh, being involved and so forth. So, uh, the, 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 you know, I, 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 I see big things for them. So anyway, anyway I just want to uh, congratulate all you guys. It's a wonderful okay. event. People come all the time and um, I look forward to it. And, you know, it's been a, an absence for a while. So it'll be nice to have again. Yeah, Bruce, does, Bruce really does a great job. So any other questions? Comment? I'm, occasionally we hear it even from where we are. <laughs> sitting across the bay but anyway what what is the time uh, beginning and end time i think you. it's six i think it's six to eight thirty um and then you know occasionally if a band goes a bit over it goes a bit over but but the music is always unplugged and it's quiet before nine okay. so. reassuring yeah, which is you know and that was kind of the plan was for people to have kind of an after work family friendly hours thing to do on monday nights um 
So, and obviously we've coordinated not being the same night as the band concert and it's, it's diff a little different music. And, but I will tell you a lot of the, we get a lot of the same crowd, you know, the band concert Sunday night and then music at the beach Monday. And I think the Legion absolutely loves selling the hot dogs and popcorn. Great. All right. I'll entertain a motion. I think it was uh, Stephen Murphy. If he seems to step away, if someone wants to make the motion for him, right, right, I there he is. right here. We uh, mute. Start video. I move that the board uh, approve the following dates for the annual Music at the Beach concert series: uh, July 11th, 18th, 25th, August 1st, 8th, 15th, 21st, and the 28th. I'll second that. Second. And any more discussion? Roll call vote. Selectman Wilkinson. She's going to oh, abstain. abstain. Yeah. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectwoman Donnelly. Aye. And Selectman Bracket votes aye. Motion carries. 4 0 with one abstention. Thanks, Next everybody. <laughs> Next you. on our list, we have annual reappointments. And we'll be doing water fire engineers, elder affair coordinators. Emergency Management, Forest Fire Warden, Memorial Day Parade Committee, Millbrook Meadow Committee, and Traffic and Parking Committee. So whoever has that motion, if they would like to. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna uh, uh, recuse myself because Darlene Trombor on the Memorial Day uh, Committee is my um, sister-in-law. Already? I'll entertain a motion. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I move that the board make the following one year reappointments, all subject to compliance with policy on board slash committee slash commission membership, board of fire engineers, Kirk Keating, Mark Watson, Doug Anderson, elder affairs coordinator, Sergeant Mary Fountain, emergency management, chief John Horvath, director, Forest Fire Warden, Michael Frontenero, Memorial Day Parade Committee, Kendra Daigle, Claire Franklin, Darlene Trumbord, Gail Zeman, Suzanne Blake, Elvira Fuccino, Milbrook Meadow Committee, Shannon Mason, Sam Colburn, Charmaine Blanchard, Laura Hollowell, Rich Lorigan, Dwight Valentine, Dara Cole, Traffic and Parking Committee, Jim Bugoni. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Selectman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Abstain. Selectman Loya. Aye. And Selectman McDonald. Aye. And Selectman Bracket votes aye. Motion carries. On to the next. Year end transfer request, if any. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. We have um, just two more motions on uh, okay. appointments. We have the two year oh. and the three year. All righty. Um, I move that the board make the following two year reappointments all subject to compliance with the board's policy on board committee commission membership. Cultural Council, Christine Downing, Francis Fleming, Laura, Co Laura Kozicek. Do I have a second for that? I'll second that. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Selectman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Donnelly? Aye. And selectman bracket votes aye. And then next motion. I move that the board uh, make the following three year appointments all subject to compliance in the board policy on board committee commissions membership. Council on Asian, agent uh, Kathleen, I'm gonna butcher this so. Scrape up. Scrape up. Uh, Rights away committee, Nathan Ives, Barbara Galvin and Brian uh, Clayton. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Select Woman Wilkinson. Aye. Select Woman Murphy. Aye. Select Woman Lilia. Aye. Select Woman Donnelly. Aye. And select Woman Bracket votes aye. Motion carries. All right, now on to year end transfers. And we'll have Mitch take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, uh, I'll go through these. So the first one for $1,113 is coming from the Essex Regional Retirement Account to Public Properties, Buildings, and Grounds. 
Um, that account uh, has uh, additional funds. We've already paid our balance for the year so that, that it is funding available. And then the second one, these are together. So I'll, I'll discuss them together. Uh, $14,087 from health insurance to public properties, buildings, and grounds. Um, uh, $10,000 of that total $15,000 ask is to uh, replace and upgrade the door handles uh, inside the town offices. So currently, uh, for those who've come in, it's simply a, a, a knob. And we don't, all, we don't have the ability to, number one, that there, that's not uh, an ADA compliant uh, uh, state for us to be in. And we have no way to, in many cases, lock the door um, without a key. So a um, it is a problem. We have had um, a couple of issues in the last few weeks with some individuals who um, needed to not be in the building um, where we realized we needed to take some uh, action on this. So DPW, um, normally we, we, we always wait. DPW has been instructed to proceed uh, as a security matter with um, uh, the uh, adjustments to the door handles. And then a portion of that, the remaining portion of that money is uh, to cover um, two uh, water bottle filling stations uh, in the installation uh, of those. So we'll install them internally. This is for the purchase of the materials. Uh, the next three, $7,000 from field coordinator salary to public properties electric, $3,400 from snow plowing OT to highway electric, and 6,000 from cemetery wages to highway electric, all to cover um, uh, the significant uh, increases we're seeing in uh, general utilities. Some of those may be further uh, or will be further dispersed out by DPW to cover uh, fuel. Uh, we needed to uh, tonight and then Thursday with finance committee, get them from the um, labor side to the expense side of the budget so they can be properly dispersed. And then 75,000 uh, from health insurance towards our uh, snow and ice deficit. So the total snow and ice deficit is approximately $122,000. Um, uh, that's after we had applied uh, $75,000 to it from town meeting. We are um, applying this $75,000 now, and you'll see at least one, if not two more, further um, transfers to continue to do this as we're working our way towards the end of the year and making sure we can cover all of our utilities. We are. Uh, we will be... Uh, continuing to transfer to satiate that deficit uh, before the fiscal year closes so that we don't have to add that to the tax rate that causes disruption uh, in a subsequent year. So uh, we are uh, recommending, the finance director and I are recommending these transfers uh, to you and we'll be recommending the same to the finance committee on Thursday. All right, thank you. Do I have a motion? You do. I move that the board of selectmen approve and ask the chairperson to sign the following year-end transfers. $1,113 from the Essex Regional Retirement Fund to public properties, buildings, and grounds. $14,087 from health insurance to public properties, buildings, and grounds. $7,000 from field coordinator salary to public properties electric. $3,400 from snow plowing OT to highway electric. $6,000 from cemetery wages to highway electric and $75,000 from health insurance to snow and ice deficit. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion or questions for Mitch? Mm -mm. Nope, roll, sounds good. Roll call vote, select Woman Wilkinson. Aye. Select Woman Murphy. Aye. Select Woman Lilia. Aye. Select Woman Donnelly. Aye. And select Woman Brackett votes aye. Motion carries. And we don't we don't have any opera funds to- Not this evening, Mr. Chair. All right, so we'll move on to Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator's updates, and we'll have Town Administrator Mitch Vieira start us off. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, regarding the FY22 budget, uh, we are uh, nearing the end of the fiscal year. So obviously, you've got these year-end transfers that are taking place. And as, as everyone is aware, it's been much talked about, not only on the municipal side, but just in, in, in life. We are experiencing significant cost increases relating to uh, vehicle fuel, and uh, heating oil for the facilities. Um, this is probably, uh, we have not been this, this tight going into the end of the year in, in quite a while for, for DPW and uh, those uh, lines that pay out, um, uh, that pay out uh, for those items. So uh, I will be, as I typically do, the last couple of weeks of June, issuing a uh, provisional spending freeze for departments uh, either this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, <clears throat> basically, if departments, um, 
need to make any any spending that is not considered uh, uh, typical. They will need to get the finance director sign off before we they move forward. Um, again, very typical as we go into the end of the fiscal year, just to make sure we don't have any surprises and that um, we can address uh, these these strains that um, are coming at us that are out of our control. Mitch, uh, Mitch can I just jump in for one moment? Uh, can we encourage uh, the police and the DPW, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll idle for obvious reasons, and I do too, but because of the cost of gas, if we can encourage it, you know, send an email uh, from department heads or whatever the case may be, but if they could, you know, shut the engine off when at all possible, considering the uh, cost of uh, gasoline. Uh, sure. When we have our uh, senior management meeting, I can have that conversation with um, DPW and police. I know police need the vehicle on because it's the electronics are tied to it. Right. Wait, um, whenever they can, you know, whenever so, they sure. can. I don't know all the, um, you know, ins and outs, but whenever they can. Sure. No problem. Um, so we, we have that uh, that'll be going out to the departments uh, again this evening or tomorrow. Uh, a uh, really positive grant note. Um, kudos to the IT department. They spearheaded a, a, a regional joint um, municipal fiber grant with several municipalities in the area. Um, Monty was our point person on this, and we were lucky enough to receive that grant, which will allow us to tie into uh, a variety of points uh, in, in our immediate region with fiber. Um, Monty, can you give a quick summary on uh, what that tie-in will do and um, really positive for our emergency communications and, and redundancy for that system. Can you just give us a quick summary, Monty? Yeah, it's um, Cape Ann regionalization, and it includes going all the way out to Danvers. We'll have a physical connection out there. Danvers and Gloucester is in talk of possibly being each other's backups for data centers, and we could tie into that. Um, connecting to Gloucester at various points will allow for a more robust and redundant system, both for computers and for emergency communications. Uh, things like potentially where the police department dispatches our community and, and Gloucester's would be able to physically back each other up in case of some kind of catastrophic event. Um, and we're also planning on going to most, if not all, quarries, water pump stations and everything and increasing the ability of DPW to manage all of their facilities. And, and that's a pretty significant point, particularly for DPW, because many of those right now, actually probably all, all of them, I think, um, have to be checked in person. You have to go and drive to them to get the readings and get any information. So uh, this big step forward, and again, thanks to IT and particularly Monty, who has led this project for us, um, really big step forward and, and uh, helpful and imp an important improvement for us. Um, Next, so FY23, we are gearing up to get into um, the next fiscal year. Uh, you know, we continue to focus and look at different um, different areas where we can uh, improve and make adjustments to our services to increase efficiency and the, the efficacy of the services that we provide. Um, we are looking at um, that particularly for our community engagement function right now. And we are also looking at that. Um, I met with the Board of Health last evening. There is a vacancy. Uh, in the administrative assistant position in that department right now. And uh, the intention, barring an objection from this board um, and subject to your uh, ultimate appointment, uh, we will be uh, planning to move ahead with um, the creation of a full-time health director role instead of simply replacing the clerical. This has been an item that's been on the budget wish list for probably, probably three or four years at a minimum. Uh, so the focus would be uh, in place of a part-time agent role, a full-time health director role. And then once that is filled, I would eliminate the part-time role and uh, we would then uh, staff up the administrative assistant role on most likely a part-time uh, basis. Uh, we have had a, a significant need and certainly um, COVID, if nothing else, has, has highlighted that for us, that uh, there is an, a significant need uh, for a full-time focus in, in that role. Um, the, the Board of Health has done an excellent job over the last few years of really looking at things beyond um, septic systems and food permits. They're truly looking at the holistic view of public health. And part of that also is our emergency preparedness function. 
uh, as it relates to, to public health. And that is something that is very time consuming, but critical and an area that, um, uh, you know, uh, especially when the Board of Health did their after action for the for the state of emergency, uh, something that was a, a, an important point, uh, more focus was necessary on our emergency preparedness uh, functions as it relates to public health. So uh, certainly something exciting for that. And obviously the final determination will be this board uh, should we move forward, barring any objections for us looking at that uh, at this point. And the, the Board of Health is uh, fully behind it and we're very excited last night um, to be going in that direction. So we are um, uh, happily preparing to, to, to move that forward. That sounds great, Mitch. Yeah. That's Thank exciting. You. And uh, another item, um, the uh, police chief and I uh, received a request for a um, temporary partial closure of School Street on June 18th from 8 to 2 for Aspiring Lodge. This is an annual request that comes in. Um, it is a partial closure. It's uh, perfectly set up. If there's an emergency, things get right out of the way. Um, uh, the police department is okay with it. So barring objection from this board, I will approve that on your behalf as um, the town has approved that uh, for a number of years prior. Mm -hmm. um, again, a well laid out plan police have uh, have signed off on. Just one one quick comment about that. Of course, totally supportive for that annual event. Um, I know one of the neighbors had reached out to us um, in the past just asking if they could get some notice of it. I don't know like what the easiest way to get to the neighbors is. Sure, so that's something that um, we will uh, have the inform, inform the applicant of and okay, ask them to make sure that yeah. they carry out notice. Yeah, I think even if they just want a few houses up School Street, they'd be fine. Sure, we'll convey that. Perfect, okay. I can pass along the name of the person who, just because I know them, so happy to do that. Great, thank you. And, um, you know, we, we are also uh, at this point, again, as we close the fiscal year, we have um, several vacancies. We're in the process of filling those as diligently as we can. Uh, every municipality um, right now is uh, experiencing um, vacancies and, and adjustments and positions, uh, we are no different. So we're in the process of trying to get those filled. Um, we are happy to have uh, a new assistant town clerk on board, happy to have a new clerk in the assessor's office on board. Uh, and we are uh, diligently moving forward and making some, some great progress in that area. Um, and as, uh, uh, as the board is aware, we certainly, we have the uh, vacancy in, 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 in our office and we continue to work um, to make adjustments to that as appropriate uh, to prepare for uh, uh, the necessary posting and moving forward, as well as the grants and special projects manager position, which is new for FY23. Very exciting uh, to have that position in place uh, to, to really uh, work with, with uh, the departments. Uh, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Uh, Mitch, uh, uh, well, I appreciate all the hard work uh, uh, the town hall does and attracting candidates uh, and I recognize fully that many uh, municipalities uh, are struggling for employees and so forth. But we are also at, at the, uh, as Neil Ramson would say, at the beginning of the line. So it's tough to attract people to come all the way down to Rockport to work at uh, Town Hall so, and, and other uh, facilities. So I, ju I just want to thank you for uh, the, the hard work. And uh, it, it, I don't know if it's going to get any easier soon, but... Uh, I know it's not easy, and and, and uh, many many places are, are feeling the, feeling the pain here with uh, uh, unable to hire uh, people. If you look at the Mass Municipal Association's job board, which is where we put all of our notices, and is really the place to look for municipal government, um, there has never been a longer list. Yeah, never, never been a longer list. Um, and uh, you know, certainly there, the other challenge that we face, there are several positions that uh, Gloucester also has vacant that are identical to ours, yep. which um, poses a pretty big headache for us. The, the worst competitor for us is, is Gloucester for same positions. Yeah. Um, yep. So just, just to add to that, um, I, another a different board that I'm on, we had a meeting with Mary Lou Sutters, who's the um, secretary of health and human services for the state. And I believe she said that the state workforce is down 12% that they just have, She's like, they just cannot find people to work state jobs either, so. So that is our, uh, that is my update for this evening, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll add that, uh, you know, now that Dan Duffy's on the EDC, that's gonna help 
as we move forward in a different direction. So, and you know, he, he had a big emphasis on communication. So I'm, I'm happy to see what he can bring to the committee and get that committee up and running. Um, I also, I also want to state as a reminder for the board members and anyone else that wants to attend this Sunday is a fireman's parade or a fireman Sunday parade. And we'll I thought it was last uh, last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be leaving the fire station at at nine o'clock. So, and and full disclosure, disclosure. <laughs> I I thought it was last Sunday, and I went to the fire department, then I went to the cemetery, and uh, it was uh, it was supposed to be the twelfth. So, I will I will be there, nice and early too. I'm saving those texts forever. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a phone call, and then he got me confused, so I had to go look at my. My God. <laughs> that was gold. Yeah. Paul yeah. being at the cemetery is act absolute gold. With a suit on. <laughs> you should have visited my dad. Hopefully you went and visited. Uh, I should have. Uh, on another note, um, we will be uh, deferring the liaison assignments to the next meeting. Just so everyone's aware, we won't be talking about that tonight. So, any other updates from the spectrum? Um, I just, I want to congratulate um, Ross, I know I'll let, I know Herm and Denise attended yesterday's reception, but um, Ross and his brother on being named Cape, Cape Ann Small Business People of the Year for Rockport. Yep. Um, and honestly, that's a big honor, Ross. You should be excited. And, you know, it's funny, we joke about the comments that people make on Facebook that they don't, you know, that we don't go to events and people don't see us. But honestly, what you and your family give back and and frankly give to this town is kind of immeasurable not just in donuts but you know everyone appreciates the donuts and bagels and at the races but your you know your business has become a community gathering place and kind of a staple on on weekend and weekday mornings for people and and we all appreciate what you do so it's an honor well deserved so congratulations thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll second that. And I will say that one of the most alarming th things that I learned last night <laughs> <laughs> was that when, when Ross and his brother took over the business, they considered eliminating the donuts. <laughs> Last for me. <laughs> that was disturbing. But my, one of, I have to say, Ross, one of my favorite parts was, I think that was your brother's son. Yep. who kept. That was so cute. Every time you and your brother went up, <laughs> uh, he accompanied you. Yep. <laughs> It's very so, cute. Thank you. <laughs> All right, if we have no more updates, we'll move on to public comment. Last piece. Monty, open it up. We have Mary S, which I believe is Z. Go ahead, Z, you're unmuted. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. I think we're losing you a little bit, Z. Yeah, I, I can't hear it either. You want to mute him, Monty? We'll come me? back to him and so. For a quick second there, we had you. Toby, you've been unmuted. Thank you. Toby Arseni in 95 Granite Street. Uh, in the public comment session at the beginning, I spoke about the Community Preservation Committee. Mm -hmm. I asked for the date of their hearing when they uh, decide on the voting. Uh, I didn't get an answer. I was told that I should contact the chairman. That's not appropriate. You should know and you should want all of the public to know. And I feel that was rude to me. Um, I resent that. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. We can try Z again. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, we got you now. All right. I always have a problem. We're leaving the earphones in and here while my sister watches television and forgetting to take them out. And I didn't know that it infected the vocal transmission as well as my audio, but maybe it does, who knows. Anyway, question I had is I noticed that the, uh, the, uh, one of the agenda items tonight was for the Economic Development Committee. And uh, the Economic Development Committee some time ago was focused on the business needs of the downtown uh, area. And uh, because of some of the uh, uh, types of things, projects that were uh, asked to be funded, um, I know that Toby brought up that he didn't think it was appropriate that the uh, 
public funds should be going towards private businesses and their development. And as a result of some of that, I believe, uh, the focus of that committee was changed from an economic development committee to a community development committee. And now with tonight's hearing and appointment, I see that most of the thrust or it looks apparently like most of the thrust going back into the business community, which is of course downtown uh, or uh, to some extent Whistle Stop Mall. And I just wondered if that's a, a signal that uh, the uh, Community Development Committee is uh, off the rails and we're back down to downtown. Uh, I will so, say that I don't recall any Community Development Committee being, being, I don't remember one being mentioned, so I could have missed that, but that's definitely not the case. And we've made it clear to the Economic Development Committee that we want a focus on the entire town as best they can, not just the downtown and Whistle Stop. And, and as we referenced them during the TA report, we, we're revisioning the community engagement and community development portion separate from economic development. But economic development committee has always been economic development committee since we since we reconstituted it. Anything else to see? Nope, that's fine, Russ. Right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Any more, Monty? Seeing none. So for first place in the longest motion, we'll have someone enter us into an executive session. Why didn't Denise get it? Are we still, are we still hazing her? <laughs> the band motion tonight. So. Oh, good. Okay, settle in. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the board enter into executive session for the following. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport, United States District Court, CA number one two one colon two zero cv one one two seven four nmg if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares votes may be taken we will not reconvene in public session executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30a section 21a3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding back beach neighbors committee versus town of rockport Land Court CA number 21 MISC 000174. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. We will not reconvene in public session. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport. Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV000364. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. We will not, will not recon reconvene in public session. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Stephen Abel versus Town of Rockport et al. Um, MCAD docket number 22BEM00744. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken, will not reconvene in public session. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Glenn McLeod et al. versus Town of Rockport et al. Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV00077. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken, will not reconvene in public session. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Rousio et al. versus Town of Rockport, United States District Court, CA number 1, colon 22 CV 10331 JGD. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect in the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken, will not reconvene in public session. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding James Doyle versus Town of Rockport et al. 
United States Federal Court number 1,21CV-11015-LTS, 1, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken, will not reconvene in public session. And executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining local 1679 AFSME general and supervisors units. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the so chair so declares votes may be taken will not reconvene in public session. Do I have a second? Second. All right, now, by not entering into executive session, it would be detrimental to the town's litigating and bargaining positions. The board will not reconvene in open session. Roll call vote, Select, Selectman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Donnelly. Aye. And Selectman Brackett votes aye. We are entering into executive session. At this time, the Board of Selectmen has ended the public portion of their meeting. We ask that you please exit the meeting at this time.